Hello everyone, it's me, Juan Gaming 4 back in another video, and today, today, we're gonna do another reaction video of Game Theory, because uh, he decided to upload the, the exact moment I was basically, you know, eating some McDonald's, eating some nuggets, but anyways, we're gonna be reacting to Game Theory, Don't Trust Her, Amanda the Adventurer. Mad Pad, you don't have to tell me twice. I don't trust Amanda one bit. One bit at all, but anyways, this is a continuation from... His previous theory about Man of the Adventure. I believe we did a reaction video on that. I can't tell. I've done so many of these. I really need to start fixing the playlist. But anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's do this. I'll shut up now. Hey there, friend. Welcome back to the neighborhood. Today we're going on an adventure. But Great. First, we'll need supplies. Let's go to the store. Can you click on the equipment store? Equipment? I don't see no equipment. That's right. We need oh. to go to the Store. Today, Never mind. we're going on a hunting adventure, so we're gonna need to protect ourselves. What weapon should we bring? My boy. This I is outlandish. Something a bit bigger than that. That's better. Look at that. We're ready to hunt. Where should we hide? Too cramped. We can't hide back there. Ugh. <sighs> I'm waiting for you in your closet. Sweet dreams. Oh, Have you are time. not in my closet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that Oh, nah, you ain't hiding in my closet. Great, Mad Pet got me scarred for life. Great. I gotta have sweet dreams knowing that. <laughs> Great. That's the things it had to do to make this video. Tell me the more and I won't. Shall not be in vain, because today we're gonna figure out what's going on with the internet's own version of Dora the Explorer, Amanda the, the creepy pasta version. I remember last year when we theorized about this little game, it was developed as part of a game jam, and as a result, was uh, simple in its approach. You put yeah. different VHS tapes into VCRs, okay. acronyms that I'm sure you Zoomers understand, and we ah. answered questions posed by the lead character Amanda. By feeding her the wrong answers, Amanda would get angrier and more chaotic, eventually losing control and becoming a monster. The internet. Yeah. Fell in love with this thing, and since then it has gone through a major glow up. Gone is the tiny living room. Gone is being stuck staring at. Yeah, it was really a major improvement. I, I was genuinely surprised. Yeah, we did do a game theory about it nine, nine months ago. Jeez. Habit of appearing behind us when we finish a tape. Oh, hey, there's a cake. But the best thing to come out is part of the full-length version of the game. Lore. Not only are there a bunch more tapes to watch through, there are secret tapes and multiple endings to find, and all of them paint a fascinating new story here. So, was my old theory right, or is there more hiding beneath the surface? Insert the tape, press play, and adjust your tracking, my friends. It's time to begin. All right. New update we play as Riley, and uh, that's about all we get to know about that character. Well, that and the fact that they just inherited this house that we're standing in from their deceased aunt Kate. However, yeah. Kate warns us that if we choose to investigate the attic and the tapes that lay within, there's no going back. Alongside this note's a conspiracy board full of post its and newspaper clippings, which means that Kate and I, you can chip it. The main focus of the board <coughs> at the beginning of the game. Oh, is no, I don't think <laughs> I think someone will be mad, Matthew. Don't do brother. it. The letter says that he used to watch the Amanda the Adventurer show a bunch as a kid but would end up in a trance-like state. Eventually, he would disappear without a trace. Joanne then asks Kate to investigate, which seems like an odd request for your local librarian. But then again, if yeah, you look true. around the cork board, you can start to see why Kate may have been the one picked for the job. We see that she was looking into the kids' school records, something a librarian might have access to. We also yeah. see a note that mentions dynakinesis, which is the supernatural ability to create and manipulate energy. She says that you would see sigils if such a transfer occurred. All right. right. So this note is a torn piece of paper with a bunch of sigils on on them. These aren't just any symbols either. These are alchemical symbols that refer to specific elements. Back in the day, alchemical focused on the transmutation of base metals like lead into noble metals like gold. Clearly, Aunt Kate ain't your average librarian. Too bad she's gone now, and it's up to us to figure out what's going on with this missing Kate. <sighs> R.I.P. Kate. Say, it would have been interesting to play as her. It's very quickly apparent that this is not an isolated incident. The tape in the neighborhood shows outlines of kids on both sides of the street. 
street. Police chalk outlines that are usually reserved for dead people lying on the pavement. If you manage to find the corrupted version of this exact tape, Amanda's sheep companion, Wooly, asks if the friends can come back to the neighborhood. Amanda, though, she seems unfazed. Now, all of this alone doesn't right. prove that Amanda is somehow making a bunch of kids go missing, but I would tell you to pay close attention to the ending credits of that VHS tape. After most of the tapes that we played through were met with a credit sequence and ending sting for the company that made the show, Hamlin Entertainment. This is the production company that makes the Amanda the Adventurer show, but their but name and their mouse logo immediately reminded me of something. What? Oh, it's a fun. So it's like a Pied Piper situation. Oh, Hamlin! Hamlin! And it's a mouse! Yes? If you, what? like Ash, don't know what's going on, this whole thing's one big reference to the story of the Pied Piper. Basically, this fairy the tale is the Piper? story of the town of Hamlin. See, there's the name right there. It's overrun by rats, and there's uh -huh. your logo. And so the town hires the Pied Piper to play his magic pipe to get rid of those rats. And okay. he does exactly that. He plays a song that lures all the rats to him, where he then leads them down to the local river to drown themselves. However, when the Jeez. town of Hamlin doesn't pay him for his services, he once again uses his pipe. But this time... He plays a song that leads all the children out of town. He marches them all oh, over to no. a local cave where they're never seen again. This story seems to match the idea that the wow. is now all of Wooly's friends. Amanda is essentially our Pied Piper. All that, we actually man. see this firsthand through one of the game's secret tapes that you can unlock. Instead of our usual CGI Amanda and Wooly adventure, we the live action, yeah, that Wooly was crazy seeing it. Lauren on her birthday. She's sitting there glaring at the TV, transfixed, much like we heard about in that. Yeah, she was ignoring her parents. I saw that. Her parents are trying to get her attention, telling her that they have her favorite ice cream ready, mint chocolate chip. Which whose favorite? Flavor is mint chocolate chip. I mean, it's good, don't get me don't. wrong, but favorite flavor? Flavor preferences aside, the parent... <laughs> Don't judge a person in their their preferences. I mean, like, come on, man. Don't judge. We ain't judging here. This is a no-judge community right here. The, we, right here in this channel, we don't have a, a judging community. Let's go back up to try and convince Lauren to come down the stairs, but suddenly, she's gone. With the front door of the house left wide open. As they run out of the house... I generally the thought that it was just, you know, Amanda the TV the grabbing saying, her. I love chocolate chip somehow amanda is able to listen through the tv and she's somehow lord lauren who's literally walked out the door and disappeared just like the children of hamlin as you Great. watch more of these secret tapes we actually get to see i thought she was gonna pull her in like entertainment in the history of the show in one of the tapes we actually meet the creator of the series sam colton and we hear about the father the show is a small live action production after being inspired by his adopted daughter rebecca did you even imagine that would be such a big sensation honestly sadie no, it was a total surprise. I mean, it's scrappy at best. You know how it is when you have a big idea and a little budget. But really, yeah. it's all Rebecca. As soon as I met my beautiful daughter, the inspiration was there. You know, she was so young when I adopted her. And despite what she's gone through, Oh, she's so she's an adopted daughter. daughter. Oh, okay. You actually find a newspaper clipping on the conspiracy board. I generally thought that these two were blood related, but no, apparently it's adopted. Quote, we may not have the budget for a big production, but I truly believe there is a soul that transcends that. Great. We were an indie horror game mentions the word soul. You know that things are gonna end badly. And sadly, and I can already tell what it is. VHS tape oh no accidents, there's a flash frame that reveals a credit for a chief neurosurgical expert, which at first glance would make you go, Why does a kid show need that? But Amanda eventually answers that exact question for us in the tape Everything Rots. Far away. If she can feel her own body rotting far away, that means that Amanda has a physical body outside of the show. And who else is that going to be but the girl that played Amanda in their original live-action production, Rebecca. I suspect that Great. this chief neurosurgical expert has figured out a way to put her mind, her consciousness, into the series, literally becoming the soul of the show. She still does have some sort of link to her body, able to feel it rotting. But clearly, that's not supposed to exist, as the tape distorts any time she thinks about it. There is good news, though. Well, her what? body may be rotting, clearly there's still a chance to save her. In the really? tape, we see Amanda playing alone on a couch, drawing with crayons and asking if we can share secrets. If we say yes, the TV audio effects disappear, and clear as day, she tells us... I'm out there. Somewhere. 
Rebecca is alive. Sure, her body might slowly be atrophying and her mind might be separated from her body, but there is still time to save her. That said, All right, we have so... to face the evil that's up ahead if we hope to do it. What is that evil? Ask yourself this. Why would Sam, Rebecca's seemingly loving adopted father, do this to her? Was it just to make the show mm, more popular? I do don't... To gather more well, about like that. I know we talk a lot about awful father figures across the various series. Oh yeah, William Afton especially. But I mean, like, he ain't Shao Tucker. You know what? No, that, they are both at the same time. But at least... Jeez, who's worse? William Afton or Shao Tucker? That's something I need to discuss. That's something we need to think about. Who's worser? Shao Tucker or, or William Afton? Because, my goodness. Uh, I'll, I'll make a short about that. ...that we cover on the show. But I was hoping that maybe, just Maybe this one would be a little bit different. Thankfully, it is. The indie horror gods heard my plea with this one because it turns out that Sam isn't the one at fault here. He is no longer the one steering the ship. Yes, Amanda the Adventurer was his live-action production, but he sold it to Hamlin Entertainment. Hamlin is For a money. party that actually bought he out the rights money. to the show and turned it into an animated adventure. Last year, Hamlin Entertainment purchased rights to the live-action program starring Colton's daughter, Rebecca. As budget and production value increased... Yeah, I know all the things going in here but i don't want to spoil too much because i you, you guys gotta go play out the game too sam wanted on paper in practice he started to feel more and more uncomfortable with how the production was being run in the yeah tape, we actually listened to there it is that's the one i'm talking about there, we hear rebecca saying a handful of what seemed like random phrases rebecca that was great yeah that was some sort of trance like it was creepy The person directing claims that this is to train the technology's dynamic voice reactions. Which is My boy Sam knows his cat! Given the rise in AI voices that we see all over the internet. However, this series, Amanda the Adventurer, is set in the early 2000s. Technology was not that advanced back then, so Sam yeah. is right to be suspicious of it all. And then, Rebecca says this. No, I don't want to do that. Rebecca, what's wrong? Who are you talking to? The man on the headphones. This ends the session, but listen again to those phrases that Rebecca was saying earlier. At first, they seem to be phrases that could be used in pretty much any episode. About yeah. Lamb for when they go to the farm. Hi, man. Yeah, for the other one. Ah, come on. I'm so sorry for the apps, man. A lamb for when they go to the farm. Yeah. Pie man for when they go to a bakery or mm -hmm. make some pies like they do in the first VHS tape. So what's the big deal here? Well, what if I told you that these phrases actually have a secondary meaning? All three of them, Bayel, Pie Man, and Balam, are phonetic ways of pronouncing the names Bayel, Paimon, and Balam. Three king demons from the Ars Goetia. Changing the names oh, of the demons has always no. been part of summoning rituals. Especially when you're talking about these... There's a demon. Of course. Context, and that's exactly that's a big surprise. Why else would there be a containment specialist that's listed in the credits of the initial neighborhood video? After chanting the words, Rebecca hears the voice of a man in her headphones. One of these demon kings, all of whom are described as having a hoarse voice. While all of these demons are certainly different, they do share a couple of similarities. They all control large legions of lesser demons. They're all able to inform or give the gift of knowledge. But most importantly, they all require hosts to manifest. And usually this oh, is no. children, either as sacrifices or to physically be the host. That is what Hamlin are doing here. They needed Rebecca and the other children to become hosts and sacrifices in order to summon these demon kings oh, and gain their knowledge and power. These children would be led to the slaughter, which is why no matter what location you pick, it always leads you back to the butcher. The eyes on those meat products aren't just a cute aesthetic choice, my friends. Those are past victims, past children that have been led to the chopping block. However, there was one Great. thing that stood in Hamlin's way, Rebecca's father, Sam. I would suspect after this My, sort of incident, yes, Sam, the real Rebecca one. From the show, maybe even find a way to pull the rights entirely. And so, as most of these evil companies tend to do, they made him disappear. It's been three weeks since local television producer Sam Colton... <sighs> I, I generally don't Sam. think Sam is dead. I'm pretty sure if Sam the creator... So happy with the idea that his show could be a bigger success that much like... I, I don't think Sam is dead. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't think he's dead. I feel like you can't... If the creator wants to, he could make the next game 
be about Sam and his ways of trying to save his daughter, Rebecca, and that he has to deal with Amanda or something. I mean, like, I'll be... I mean, it's there, I mean, but yeah, I, I definitely don't think Sam is gone. I'm pretty sure he's somewhere. I'm sure, I'm not sure where, but somewhere. It's a possibility. The fox in the video, everything rots. He wasn't killed by a knife. He wasn't killed by a gun. He was instead lured in by Hamlin using sweet berries. The sweet lies that would convince him that they would turn his show into something bigger. But instead, it was all a big trap. A trap created by the very people that swore to help him. And then with Sam out of the picture, Rebecca is all alone. Never they mind. Sam is gone. Line and do whatever they want with her. Trapping her in the Hamlin facility. Right. Like the Hamlin's in the same... Amanda, so it's in the same level as... Her. Fazbear Entertainment, then. There's no one to help her. Will you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the lonely kitten? Won't you help the However, unlike silly Mr. Fox, I don't think that this was the end for Sam. I suspect Aha. he's still around, keeping a close eye on things and trying to take him down from the inside. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that Sam is the real identity of Wooly. Wooly spent what? the entirety of the game trying to keep Amanda on track. When she begins to discuss topics that aren't appropriate for a kid's show, like death or rotting, Wooly is very quick to interject. He tries to get Amanda back on the good and wholesome path. Men can die if they don't get enough light or water, or if they get a disease. Let's go back to our nice picnic. Amanda, nothing is rotten here. What do you think? Do you think that everything rots? Of course not, Amanda. I'm not asking you. Answer my question. You don't have to answer that. This strikes Thank me you, not Sam. as actions Thank of you, a child, but rather of a parent. We hear a story during one of the secret tapes about how after Sam's disappearance, the show begins to change. It starts to talk True. about inappropriate subjects. This is not the show that Sam built, and he can see that. Wooly doesn't just play the killjoy either. He's also the one that tries to help Amanda by keeping her calm. When Amanda loses control, the monster comes out, and Wooly knows it. So when she starts to forget things and remember the bad stuff that's happened because of her, he desperately tries to make her happy. I think Amanda is confused. Here's a secret. It's my birthday. Maybe we can help her out. Sounds to me like the actions of a concerned father. He knows what Amanda is and what will happen if the monster is let loose. So he steers Amanda and the player towards positive and happy subjects in order to keep that beast at bay. But the monster right. and Hamlin are fighting back. In their visit right. to the farm, Wooly is constantly being silenced. Amanda tells him that sheep don't talk. And as we go through, he begins to baa uncontrollably. Yeah, that was weird, but yeah. Sheep like all the rest, finally falling in line with Hamlin's plan. It's actually pretty diabolical. You're wanting to turn Rebecca into Amanda, so why not test out that mind transfer ability on someone you don't mind accidentally killing if it goes wrong? Notice that it's Wow. Happy Quest Nutrition is now better. That's crazy. You literally going to feed you're just gonna let you literally use Sam as a test dummy. I mean like I I get it, but dang And Ah, oh, dang. I think that makes sense, okay? Like, because, okay, I know you guys are not going to know this, so huge spoilers, but there has been some tapes that shows a little girl signing papers. And I'll be honest, I genuinely thought it was kind of weird that two people are bringing her in this room and I don't see a parent. So I think MatPat's right about that. That Sam was the first tummy, was the first dummy. Just to make sure that the equipment works. And then they do Amanda. That, that, oh my god, that's crazy. That it's only once Wooly becomes a true sheep that we see Amanda asking to help the poor and lonely kitten. The kitten that represents her. Now that Sam is gone, she's truly alone. Asking for someone, anyone to help her. It looks like this kitten is in big trouble. It might die before anyone can help it. But hey, well, Riley really did luck out just being gifted a house by their aunt. Sadly, we're not all that lucky. We just can't wait around for a property with an attic this large to fall into our laps. Fortunately, True. you can start saving up today to buy... Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I genuinely... Okay, I genuinely do think that the creator might do uh, Amanda 2, I think. Because the, uh, the old one was like... A prologue, I and mean, we not a prologue, like the beta version, 
And the one we got has to be the real one. So I think in an Amanda 1, 2 or Amanda 3, I don't know. Uh, let's just go with 2 at this point. If there is an Amanda 2, I feel like we can play a game where we can save Amanda. Kinda? I don't know. I'm just throwing the idea out there. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video so I know you guys enjoy. Comment down below what you think about Amanda the Adventurer. And uh, subscribe. We're trying to download, upload daily. We're trying to upload daily. This is Juan Gamer 54 signing off.